pickup truck. You like going off road with this? Maybe you can find out from the mud it's covered with or something like that. That's a performance question. If it's any type of performance vehicle at all, it doesn't have to be a Porsche, something that's some type of performance vehicle, a Mustang, something like that. A real neat question that I used to have so much fun with is asking the customer, do you like to drive this vehicle the way it was meant to be driven? Sometimes you get a deer in the headlights. If the customer smiles when you ask that question, you got it. Now you know that the most important thing to that customer is handling and responsiveness of handling, okay? So that's a performance question that you have. Right? Follow up. All right, this is kind of in the, in the process of, you asked a question, they responded, then afterwards kind of, okay, as the example there, you mentioned earlier, look for a car that can function off-road and go from there. Right. These are just a little helpful hints for you on, on analyzing that need. We don't do that properly. And the reason the cars people should do that, the competition does not. They do not do that. If you weren't in the business you are now and you had to go buy a set of tires, most of the places would say, well, we got these on set. What good is that? How do you know what I want? Just because you have those, you have those on sale. Let your sales presentation, let that customer know that your concern is what they want rather than what you have to sell. The both of them will come together, but you have to have that customer on your side first, and you do that by asking a question and listening. This is the hardest part if you haven't been doing it. Right? New people have a real problem doing this. Try it. Practice it. Practice it. Practice it. Find out what the customer needs and just, just tell them. One of the neatest things, and you've all got I'm sure, tire, some type of a tire display. Do you have tire walls? Do you have tire, okay. The customer says, well, what are all these questions for? You walk over to that tire wall, stand in front of it and go, Mr. Phillips, there's eight different tires here. They're all made to do a specific thing. You need to help me, if you would please, which one of these is going to be best for you? Oh, yeah, in that case, okay, fine. See? Give them a reason to talk to you. All right. Demonstrate listening, okay. And sometimes, although listening is terribly important, it helps with the customer. If they told you something and then said, well, yeah, let me, well, okay, let me see if I get this right. You want a regular tire that you can take off road, but you still need to perform well on the highway. I mean, every every single light truck tire customer says that. I go up north every once in a while, I get a load of wood up at Uncle Ben's cabin, but I really drive it to work every day on the highway. Okay, it's the old 90-10 principle. We used to use, if they're not off road, more than 10%, then a, a riptide tire is okay for them. If it's more than that, well then fine. They're right away. If we didn't ask that question, you know, we got these truck tires on sale, we'll put them on. See? On light truck tires, just a little hint. You had a truck dealership, I had a truck dealership. You spec your trucks that you buy from GM or whoever with truck tires, good gripping truck tires. And I just take the ones that come OE. I'm going to sell all the trucks. Anybody know why? Test drive. Why do you think OE puts most of the time a rib type tire on a <coughs> pickup truck? Noise. No, noise, softness of ride, drive of everything. 55% of the half ton pickups in America, customers should have bought a beer. <coughs> because they, they aren't used as trucks. That's a fact. They aren't used as trucks. 
So OE knows this, the original equipment knows this. So the, the first thing anybody does when they're, they're spending 40, well, 30, dollars $40,000 for a truck is they test drive. And your, your trucks are gonna ride like a truck. <laughs> Mine are gonna ride like a Lincoln. Now, you've been in this business. What do you think most truck owners, do you think they replace the truck tires with the same thing they had on there? Absolutely not. No, they don't. Because it's a truck, right? Maybe they do, but most of the time, this is a great place to have that conversation and some fun. And show the customer there's different things you can, different types of tires here. What do you want to do? They'll tell you. Now, every time a customer answers your question, what are they doing? They're getting closer to a close of that sale, right? Every single time. If they're going, ah, I don't give a shit. No, 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 they won't say that. If, 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 you, if the questions are right and the answers you're getting, boy, I think you're getting closer and closer and closer to that close, okay? That, that's the fun part. Now, here's where we change from the customer to you. You have, it won't be from me, but it will be from, you have tire representatives, I guess, that you deal with, or carts, corporate people that come in and talk to you about the products that you sell. I'm a little harsh here. It is absolutely and only your responsibility to be extremely familiar with the products that you're selling. You have to. You have to know the features and the benefits of those, of those products to be able to do this. And it's polite because you just spent maybe five to seven minutes, maybe ten minutes, having this nice conversation with the customer and that person Mr. or Mrs. telling you what they want. Now, <laughs> how's it going to look and this happens? If you then say, okay, Mr. Phelps, I know it. And you walk over and you go, well, look, which one do you want? That doesn't work. The customer goes, wait a minute. I just spent all this time telling you exactly what I want that tire to do. You've got all these different kinds is not the customer expecting you to say, this is the one? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Don't, don't not do that, all right? So, here's the process. Hi, smile, find out what they need. Now, you're the expert. Yes, they kind of know they've been on the internet, but you're the expert. And it really gets confidence in that customer. When you walk over to that tower wall and say, Mr. Phillips, because of all these things you've said, you summarize, this is the tower I recommend for what you've told me. How can the customer say no? Rather than, which competition does, well, we got these on sale, or, you know, that might work, and that might work, and that might work, and that might work. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sorry, you're, you're, I, you're going to make the customer mad, all right? Don't do that. Show the tire recommend. Make sure that the no plates are clean. Okay, fine, you, you need to do that, and I'm sure they are. But this is terribly important. Show what they will receive for their money. Emphasize the attractive look. Okay, fine. The recommendation must match the information the customer provides. <laughs> Little tidbit. I <laughs> was in a dealership once. And the salesperson asked the fellow how much, how would you like to set a set of tires? And this guy just went into a tirade <laughs> about the tires that came on his vehicle were OE, and they just, they were terrible. There was no traction, they were noisy, everything else. What did the salesman do? Because they were on sale. Well, Mr. Phillips. And showed him the tire that this customer just kept saying, I don't like them. See, no listening skill there at all, all right? So when you recommend this tire, as it says here, it has to match what the customer told you. That, that's common sense. I told you all this stuff is common sense. This is just a process to 
to use your conversation skills, your questioning skills, and common sense. So now we're, we're showing the tire recommended, and that was easy. We've done that. Boom! Do not not do that. You're confident stuff. You're the guy. This is the one for you. And, and, and if it's not, I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, they get picked a hundred and eighty-nine dollar one. We'll get into that. And there's a way of countering that. And it works. But we've shown this is the one. Now, here's where you gotta be an expert. This is this is where you've got to be an expert. Do you have different choices? When you when a customer needs bricks, are there different pads, goods and bads, features, benefits about? Okay. Are there what other kind of differences are there in selling a brick job? I mean, we got a different pad. One is longer, lasts longer, doesn't squeak. What else is there? Somebody help me here. Turning versus direct replacement. Pardon me. Rotors. Turning versus direct replacement of rotors. Oh, okay, there's something there too. All right. So, but 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 you need to know the difference the difference between the pads, whether to turn the rotor, replace the rotor. Okay, there is a feature and a benefit of what you're telling the customer. What is it? Did I miss something? Okay, cool. All right, it's important now. Everybody will tell you about feature and benefits. You got to do that. You got to do that. Some will say you got to say the benefit first, and then you got to sell the feature. Okay, fine, whatever, whatever works for you. But please do this and remember this rule: never mention one without the other. If you got the greatest feature in the world, <laughs> and some some new people in this business, they really they get the tires down and all the features up and all the stuff and the tread design and all that, but just beautiful, and they just start spilling out all those features. The customer's sitting there going, "Yeah, okay, what's in it for me?" They never say that. Salesman never says that. He's just so proud of all the stuff that he knows about this tire. Well, you're not buying it, fellow the customer. All right? So every time you mention a feature, there is a benefit tacked onto that. Or the other way around. The benefit might be the best wet traction out there. Which is what you said, Mr. Phillips, when you walked in here. You're tired of sliding around on that minivan on the highway. So I want something that has the best wet traction out there. All right, this has the best wet traction out there, and it has that because of, now it's the feature. So whichever way you do it, do not mention one without the other. Feature benefit, benefit feature. Makes no difference. Okay. And these are just some examples. The benefit is why, why it's important and what it means to the person will buy it. Okay, fine. There's some other examples. The practice communicating the benefit first, if you want to, and then the feature. Okay, whichever is more comfortable. If, if you're really high, and this is yourself, if you're really high on knowing product, and I know a lot of the people I used to work with, they really take their pride into knowing the product. And if you're more comfortable doing that, fine. But don't mention six features in a row because the customer, you lost them. They, okay. They're not tired people, you are. All right. One feature, one benefit. Or vice versa. Okay. And here's the big thing. All right. A rib tread design. What's it going to get? One thing. Just one thing. What's, what's the benefit of rib tread design? Uh, comfort. All right. There's one. What's another benefit of a rib type tread design? Quiet. There you go, there's two. What's another benefit of a rib tread design? I guess that's why we're here today. Anybody? Okay. Smoothness, quiet. That's why you look at original equipment tires. I could take probably five different manufacturers and line the tires up so you're looking at the tread design. OE tread design. You, you'd have difficulty picking which one is which because they all want quiet, smooth. Yes, it's got some traction, but not the best. Mm -hmm. right? That's a rip-type tread design. 